Hello and welcome from Trend Signal for our review of the data and events the week beginning the 12th of October. Uh, Monday morning sees uh, European equities a bit mixed uh, despite a sharp rally in Shanghai up about 3.3%. Some fairly positive household spending data which is providing a little bit of a lift for the slowing Chinese economy. Uh, it is a holiday uh, in uh, Japan. Um, I guess uh, the pullback is uh, in, in European markets is uh, due to the fact they're maybe a little bit stretched following sharp rallies from last week. Uh, we've also got a bank holiday in uh, Canada and the US, uh, the observance of Columbus Day uh, when uh, Christopher Columbus arrived in the Americas on October the 12th, 1492. But it is not a market holiday. All markets are open on Monday. Uh, all day. So, um, markets uh, very much risk on uh, last week following uh, poor NFP non farm payroll readings what, 10 days ago. Um, equity markets uh, rebounding, touching a three week high. Dollar uh, in retreat with Friday's move, pushing the dollar back to mid September lows. Uh, bond markets, I guess, not surprisingly going in the other direction, although inflationary expectations. Uh, or I should say deflationary expectations, preventing anything but a, a modest sell-off in sovereign bonds. Um, as I say, the dollar at, at its weakest point for um, three weeks, um, certainly since mid-September. But last week, uh, it was the equities that really powered ahead following the non-farm payroll data. The FTSE up uh, four and a half, four point six percent The Dow Jones, big move, 612 points, although a bigger index, but that was still 3.7%. Uh, the S&P up 63 um, points, that's what, three and a quarter percent. And the DAX up 430 points, 4.4%. Um, and we can see why, really, a lot of it certainly Markets were a little bit oversold, but the resource sector, oil, precious metals, base metals, all recovering significantly. Gold up $18 last week. Platinum $71, a massive squeeze higher following the sell-off um, uh, due to the emissions scandal at VW. Palladium keeps rallying, though, uh, up another $11. That's now up $188, or 37%. Uh, since it uh, has started making its move uh, and, and pushed forward by the again the emission scandal, uh, palladium used in uh, catalytic converters for gasoline cars, uh, assuming the markets are guessing that diesel engines will not be welcome in the u s um, Brent crude up uh, four dollars thirty what uh, that 's just uh, over nine percent uh, wTI crude pretty much in the same uh, vein up what three dollars eighty which is uh, what just under eight and a half percent down to a fall in u s production numbers um, obviously middle east angst uh, syria russia etc uh, and obviously a weaker u s dollar being a dollar based commodity that 's helped all the uh, dollar commodities uh, supply and demand factors supporting other markets. Uh, Glencore's cut zinc output by a third, which is really one of the catalysts for a broad-based rally in metal uh, prices and mining shares, um, giving commodities probably the biggest weekly gain since nine, uh, 2012, a uh, significant move. Copper up 3.3%, uh, another uh, significant rebound up from multi-year lows, although I note that Rio uh, has vowed not to cut output, so that may pressure may come to bear on copper again at some stage, but certainly all uh, precious metals, base metals and oils showing significant rebounds uh, from weekly lows. So uh, data and events this week, uh, the debate rages about the Fed. It's um, getting particularly dull and particularly repetitive, but it is very important. Uh, data this week, as always, will be closely scrutinized as to how it may or may not affect uh, the Fed's thinking. Uh, the Federal Reserve, or its uh, rate setting committee, the FOMC, um, are unlikely to raise rates in October now. Uh, they, I think they meet on the 27th and 28th of October, but we're not expecting uh, too many fireworks that meeting, and expectations seem to have been put back with a significant minority now expecting a uh, rate rise um, in the new year. Um, okay, so data out this uh, week. Inflation data, both in the U.S. and the U.K. Let's just have a look at that. So uh, Tuesday morning, 9:30, um, we have U.K. inflation, similar to last month's. Um, we're expecting uh, the headline rate to remain at zero. Uh, core inflation dropped to um, 
1%, little change is expected in this data. So CPI coming in at 0.0%. Uh, no inflation, no deflation. Um, US inflation data is out uh, the following uh, Thursday, so the following um, on Thursday, not the following day. I apologise. Um, September inflation expected to show, so show U.S. consumer prices falling back into deflationary territory. Uh, I say falling back; they were in deflationary territory uh, the previous month. Um, core C, uh, sorry, um, that's the CPI. The core CPI is expected at plus 0.1 percent, although there were rumours about that falling to flat, if not into negative territory as well. So. With that in mind, you can perhaps understand why um, there are some members of the FMC that are not rushing to uh, vote for a rate rise just yet. Um, other data out, we've got the Philly uh, Fed Manufacturing Index out at uh, 3 o'clock on, on Thursday. Uh, an improvement from the uh, minus uh, 6 reading in uh, September, so the October number we're expecting a, a reading of minus 0.1. Um, really in line with the uh, expected improvement in uh, economic, uh, sorry, consumer sentiment. Uh, so manuf uh, economists looking for an improved uh, manufacturing sector there. And then finally, uh, on to the um, prelim University of Michigan consumer sentiment. Um, a modest rebound, although the previous month's number was actually revised up anyway. Um, last uh, month's reading, in fact, uh, the adjusted number, not the adjusted number, but the original number was the lowest reading in a year. Uh, so um, you can see how uh, some of the moves in August has effect, had affected consumer sentiment. But we're looking for an improvement, as I say, uh, from last month's uh, poor reading at 88.838. Got to be lucky for some. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Bye for now. If you would like more information about trading the right way, Trend Signal is giving you the opportunity to see and hear about its services live at a free online seminar. Take a look at the Trend Signal website for the latest events and to book your free place.